The Technos Pack 20 was recently launched and it was a big upgrade from this Pack 10 series last year. In this video, I'd like to highlight all the new features that this phone has, all the way from the hardware features to the software features, and I will be highlighting all of them in this video. Three models are released, this Pack 20, this Pack 20 Pro, and this Pack 20 Pro Plus which is the one will be the focus on today right here. This is not an in-depth review of this device, but by the end of this video, you'll have known all the highlights of this device. So let's get started. Let us start off with the design. This phone has an all new design, which I think most people are going to love. It now features a curved edge screen. This design is not often seen for devices at this price point, and now it has a premium look, and I must say that the build quality really feels nice. It is also lighter than the previous model by 29 grams, and it is also thinner. And just as a by the way, last year the Spark 10 series was up to the Spark 10 Pro. They did not have a Pro Plus model like the one right here. The Spark 20 also has new color. The one right here is called the Lunar Frost but they also have a magic screen which is now green and they have another color called Tempra Orbits. In terms of the brightness on this screen, it can go to a peak brightness of 1000 nits. They have also introduced an AMOLED panel now with 120 hz refresh rate. Previously it was 90 hz on an LCD panel. However, the screen resolution is similar. The phone also introduced an IP rating and it is now IP53 rated. That means that this phone can be used in dusty environments and can withstand minor water splashes. However, it is not waterproof or dustproof. Another big highlight is that this phone came with the in-display fingerprint sensor, which is previously side-mounted on the power button. Now let's talk about the camera. The camera features some huge big upgrades. The back camera now features a 108 megapixel sensor with an aperture of 1.8. The selfie camera is still the same, that 2 megapixel. However, the upgrade to the selfie camera is that the video can now shoot up to 2K, that is 1440p resolution. Away from the camera specs, they also introduced some new features within the camera app. For example, they introduced dual mode, which is a feature that allows you to shoot using the front and the back camera at the same time, which is really nice. And just as an example, uh, this is how it looks. Uh, yeah, you can see I'm, yeah, you can see my camera and you can see my face right here. There was also another feature added to the camera app, which was within the Camon series and not the Spark series, and it's called the Sky Shop. The Sky Shop allows you to take a picture of the sky, however, you can change how the sky looks like. It offers different presets and I think it's a cool feature to have. Now let's talk about the specs and performance. The phone featured an upgrade to the processor. It now uses a MediaTek Helio G99 Ultimate processor. It is built on a 6 nanometer architecture uh, compared to uh, the 12 nanometer uh, Helio G G88 processor, which was on the Spark 10 Pro. And as I mentioned, uh, this is not a full review. However, in theory, this is supposed to have a 10% higher clock speed, 28% higher memory bandwidth, a 54% higher score in benchmarks, and a 10% higher CPU speed. This is info gathered from versus.com and Nano Review. So for the CPU benchmarks on Geekbench 6, this is what I got. And for the gaming benchmarks, which I used 3 Mark, this is what I got. In terms of the memory, this phone is now 8 GB of RAM, and there's no 4 GB RAM variant. However, you'll see a lot of stuff advertised about um, having 16 GB RAM, and that just means that you can expand the RAM by 8 GB of virtual RAM. So having a total of 16 GB of RAM. The storage is also now 256 GB, and there's no 128 GB variant on this model. Let's talk about the speakers and audio. The speakers are now stereo speakers, which support 24-bit 192 kHz high-res audio and high-res wireless audio. And here's a speaker test. There are also some upgrades to the network on this device. This phone now supports more Wi-Fi standards. It can now operate between the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. This however will be noticeable depending on the router you have and if it is compatible. The phone also has a better navigation system as it now uses the GLONASS technology. Let's talk about the battery life on this device. So the battery specs are still the same, it still uses a 5000 mAh battery. However, I must comment on it that the battery on this device has really impressed me. Even on standby, it can go for days if you're not using it. And you'll still have very many days of power on this device without turning it off. 
However, an upgrade to the battery is that it now charges faster. It now charges at 33 watts compared to 18 watts from last year. And now finally, let's talk about the software. Out of the box, this phone comes with Android 14, which is nice to see, and the iOS version is 13.6. This phone also introduced some AI features and it now has an AI wallpaper generator. So you basically input your prompt and you'll have an AI wallpaper generated for you, which is actually high quality and they actually look good. And Techno being the official sponsors of Afcon, they have tried to also integrate that into this phone. So this phone has a theme uh, related to Afcon and which actually looks nice and it's up kind of uh, within the home apps. You can see how they've been customized to kind of fit the Afcon theme. And still on Afcon, uh, this phone uh, introduced the always on display and within that they also introduced the uh, icons, a lot of icons within the uh, Afcon theme that you can have on the always on display, which is nice. And finally, they introduced uh, something called the dynamic port. So from the name, it is similar to what you see on the iPhone 14, but it is not usually there all the time. It appears when you have the charging animation, you are having a call in the background. So yeah, it's something cool that they've added and probably they should bring more functionality to it uh, in future. But yeah, uh, that's about the dynamic port. So those are all the new features that are on this device. So leave a comment and tell me which one was your favorite one. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do a full review on this device as I've had it for a short time. However, if I get the chance to, I definitely will. So click the video on the screen to watch my vlog on the launch of this device and see you in that video.